Today we're going to be learning about fraction equivalence and what we're doing today is going to help us as we move into our math lessons next week. So in the word equivalence you can probably hear equal and every time I say this word I like to put my arms one over the other and make this equal sign with them because equivalence means things that are equal. So if you look at the first half of this word we see equa and that prefix simply means equal or equal value. Some words that have the same prefix would be equity, which is pronounced different than equivalence, but it means fairness. And then the word equilibrium, which means balance. Hard words, but when the prefix is equa, it means equal or fair value. Yay! Okay, so today we're going to use fraction models to learn about equivalence. Let's start with our fraction bars. That's just one way we can model fractions. All right, so today we're gonna to be looking at some fractions that are equivalent to one half. So here is our whole fraction bar, and here's what half looks like. And half is our benchmark fraction, which means that we're gonna refer back to it as fourth graders over and over again to help us determine if fractions are greater than or less than half. It's an easy thing for us to keep referring back to. So how many fourths are equivalent to one half? So if I get my fraction bars, this is what the unit fraction one fourth looks like. Obviously one fourth is not equivalent or equal to one half. It's smaller. The denominator is larger, but that means I'm taking my whole and making it into more equal parts. So they get smaller. So how many fourths would it take? to make one half? It would take two. How many sixths would be equivalent to one half? So before I even show you the unit fraction, fraction bar for sixths, you can probably predict it's going to be smaller than fourths. Even though the denominator sixths is larger than fourths, it means we're cutting our whole into more equal parts. So they're gonna get smaller. So there it is. There's our tiny little sixth. How many sixths would it take to be equivalent to one half? Three. Three sixths. And how many thirds are equivalent to one half? So I'm going to get rid of my fourths and my sixths and I'm going to pull back out the thirds here. Here's my third unit fraction. Hmm. Does it look like if I add another third I'm going to be equivalent to one half? Nope. If I have two thirds, that's greater than one half. So there is not a way we can make thirds equivalent to one half. We say they're not equivalent. So here's what the fractions would look like. Two fourths is equivalent to one half. Three sixths are equivalent to one half. And Thirds are not equivalent to one half. So it, the symbol we use to show that something is not equivalent is an equal sign with a slash through it. All right, let's do a little practice. What are some fractions that are equivalent to one half? Well, in the last slide, we knew that one half is equivalent to two fourths. So let's take a look at the denominator of four what do you notice about the numerator that's two? When I look at two fourths, I see that the numerator two is exactly half of the denominator, which is four. Hmm, that makes sense, that it would be equivalent to half. Let's see how many sixths it takes to make a half. We said three sixths, so one half is equivalent to three sixths. Take a peek at the denominator We've got sixths, and now look at the numerator. Three is exactly half of six, so it is equivalent to half. Let's try this out and see if that works with other denominators. So here's our fraction, benchmark fraction, one half. What if we were going to try to find an equivalent fraction to one half that had a denominator of eight? So here's what the unit fraction eight looks like. Definitely going to take more than one of them, right, to equal one half. So peek at the denominator. It's eight. What's exactly half of eight? 
four. So let's see what happens if I have four eighths. Boom, four eighths is equivalent to one half. So that's an easy way to peek and see if your fraction's equivalent to one half, the numerator will be exactly half of your denominator. Let's try one more. How many tenths would be equivalent to one half? Here's what the unit fraction, one tenth, looks like. Peek at your denominator, 10. What is exactly half of 10? Five. There we go, five tenths is equivalent to one half. One of the earlier examples we did was how many thirds would be equivalent to one half. And here we have one third, which is not equivalent to one half. So when I add another third, I've got two thirds. And two thirds is not equivalent to one half. Take a look at the denominator of two-thirds. It's a three. What's exactly half of three? Well, it's one and a half. And we don't have one and a half thirds. So we can say that this is not equivalent. One half is not equivalent to one-third or two-thirds. All right, so we can look at the same questions and just use a different fraction model. Instead of fraction bars, what if we used number lines? How many fourths are equivalent to one half? Well, that's what that would look like if my same whole was broken into four equal parts, it would take two fourths to be equivalent to half. How many sixths are equivalent to one half? There we go. Same whole, I just changed how many equal parts I was dividing it or breaking it up into. Three sixths is equivalent to one half. How many thirds are equivalent to one half? Well, here you can clearly see no thirds are equivalent to one half. I do know that one third is less than our benchmark fraction of one half and two thirds that's greater than our benchmark fraction of one half. What you're going to do next in the math module is complete your practice for today called Understanding Equivalence. On the right hand side, you've got some fraction bars that you can use as your models. You can drag them to the white workspace below. You'll need to look at the gray fractions and test them out to see if they are greater than half or less than half. When you're done, drag the fractions into the box that says less than one half or greater than one half, and then hit the submit button. Good luck.